Hi, I'm Jim Covington. I'd like to welcome you to this week's issue of ISBA State House Review. Today is May 14th, 2015. We have two to three weeks more of regularly scheduled uh, General Assembly uh, regular session. And I would like to talk to you about a number of bills, which I'm going to skim through the PDF that should be on your screen uh, or you can get to. I will go into more detail. But these bills are all still pending and live, and I'm just going to kind of um, a number of them may be of interest to you. The first two bills are really big ones, and uh, it's one, the first one is Senate Bill 57, and it's a rewrite of the Illinois Marriage and Dissolution of Marriage Act, introduced by Senator John Mulrow and Representative Kelly Burke, both of Chicago. The second one, uh, the same sponsors as House Bill 1531, it uh, rewrites the Illinois Parentage Act. There are parts of uh, the Parentage Act that are 50 plus years old in our current statute. Uh, both have passed the Chamber of Origin and are now awaiting a vote in the second chamber. Those are substantial pieces of legislation and uh, it, you, know, you might want to take a look at it if you practice in that area. The third bill has passed uh, both chambers already and it uh, amends the mortgage foreclosure article of the Illinois Code of Civil Procedure. It's Senate Bill 735. It provides that a court is not required to appoint a special representative for a deceased mortgagor to defend the action if there is in one of three situations, a beneficiary under a transfer on death instrument, a person or entity that was conveyed title to the property by the deceased mortgagor before death, or three, a person or entity that was conveyed title to the property on the administration of the deceased estate, or four, trust that conveyed title to the property. That has passed both chambers. The next bill uh, is um, another uh, major change in policy is House Bill 218, which decriminalizes small uh, amounts of cannabis, and it opposes a fine of no more than 125 per possession of 15 grams or less of cannabis, and that's sponsored by Representative Kelly Cassidy from Chicago and uh, Senate, uh, Senator Mike Nolan from Elgin. It does a number of things also in the bill. Uh, it kind of does away with the per se uh, for cannabis, trace mounts for DUI prosecutions. In other words, under current law, if there is a trace of cannabis in your system, however inactive, um, and which can stay in your system up to you know close to 30 days, that's an automatic per se DUI. Uh, now substitutes a um, per se standard of cannabis of uh, 15 nano to sell a blood or 25 nano for saliva in the system. <clears throat> Pardon me. It also allows for alternate ways for the law enforcement to test for cannabis DUI using any bodily substance, which means saliva, for testing, and under current law, it's just breath, blood, or urine. It does a number of other things. It has passed the House and awaiting a vote in the full Senate. The next bill is also a major piece of legislation, in my opinion. It's a House Bill 2635 uh, that amends the Mechanics Lien Act. It uh, is introduced by Representative Ron Sandek from Downers Grove and Senator Don Harmon from Oak Park. It allows a claimant to proceed directly against a bond substituted for the property. Uh, 49 other states allow this. It's tried to make sure that the contractor or trades are paid, but keep the construction and lending going as opposed to being bogged down in uh, all the ancillary litigation that sometimes a foreclosure of a current mechanics lien uh, involves. And I, it allows for the, uh, uh, the prevailing party in an action to get his or her attorney's fees, and the prevailing party is defined as a lien claimant that recovers at least 75% of the of the of its lien claim or the principal of the bond if the lien claimant recovers less than 25% of the amount of its claim. It does some other things in there. Uh, it has passed the House and the Senate Judiciary Committee and is waiting a full vote in the Senate. Senate Bill 90 is uh, amends the Disabled uh, uh, Adults Act and the uh, Probate Act and it's introduced by Senator Ira Silverstein of Chicago and Representative Peter Breen from Lombard, and it creates a rebuttable presumption that a will or codicil is void if it was executed or modified after the testator is adjudicated disabled in two situations, one where a plenary guardian has been appointed, or two, a limited guardian has been appointed and the court has found the testator lacks testamentary capacity. The rebuttable presumption is overcome by clear and convincing evidence that the testator had the capacity to execute the will or codicil at the time the will or codicil was executed, 
and the rebuttable presumption does not apply if the will or codicil was executed in compliance with a court order. It has passed the Senate and is awaiting a hearing in the House Judiciary Committee. The next bill is uh, really amends uh, what a trial judge is going to have to do before taking a guilty plea, and it's House Bill 2569. It's introduced by Senator, uh, pardon me, Representative John Cabello from McChesney Park and Senator Terry Link from Waukegan, and it prohibits a guilty plea from being taken unless the court explains a number of things uh, to a defendant, such as, you know, collateral consequences, uh, uh, what will happen in education. I've kind of listed them for you in your PDF attachment, but it's, uh, I think the intent of the bill is to ensure that defendants know the full range of things that might happen to them upon a guilty plea. Also related to uh, criminal law procedures, House Bill 1121, introduced by Representative Lou Lang from Skokie and President of the Senate John Cullerton, and it is the enabling legislation to implement the Crime Victims Constitutional Amendment that was passed by the electorate last year in the general election. And it goes through and sort of implements that and makes a number of changes on trial procedures to ensure that that constitutional amendment is complied with. That's passed the House and is awaiting a vote in the full Senate. The next bill is Senate Bill 159, introduced by uh, Senator Bill Hain from Alton and Representative Ann Williams from Chicago. And it's, um, I guess, can be charitably and accurately described as kind of a tweaking cleanup of last year's uh, overhaul of the Healthcare Power of Attorney Act. And um, it makes a number of changes to uh, tweak that bill. Uh, uh, it adds an option on the short form POA for a principal select whether the agent can have access to the principal medical records and information, adds language directing the uh, health care provider to consult uh, the health care agent, uh, permits an agent to pursue applications for government benefits made during the principal's lifetime when no administrator or executor is acting on behalf of the principal's estate. There's like seven changes it does. Um, it has passed the Senate and is now awaiting a vote in the full House after passing out a House Judiciary Committee uh, yesterday. The last bill I'd like to talk to you about is House Bill 1446. It amends the lifetime revocation issue with driver's license. Uh, this bill is introduced by uh, Representative Elaine Neckritz from Buffalo Grove and Senator John Mulrow from Chicago. Under current law, if you have four more uh, DUI convictions, you may never drive under any circumstances in this state forever or apply for any other license in any other state. Uh, this retains that prohibition, but it permits the person to ask the Secretary of State for a restricted driving permit after a five-year period. It, uh, the person would have to go through an extensive hearing, uh, alcohol, substance abuse evaluation, uh, hearing by the Secretary of State, and if granted, the driver would be re uh, required to permanently use a BAID device to drive under certain limited circumstances, but the person will never be eligible for full and reinstatement of Illinois driving privileges. The thought behind that was, is you're make, there are some folks that uh, after you know struggles with substance abuse, they do in fact turn their lives around, and this was a chance at a chance to make them safe, legal, and insured. And uh, it's passed the House and Senate Criminal Law Committee, and is awaiting a vote in the full Senate. Um, that bill was actually supported by MAD and the Alliance Against Intoxicated Motorists uh, be, with, with the recognition that uh, we need to give people who have turned their lives around uh, a chance at a chance before the Secretary of State to drive legally again. Thank you for listening, and uh, I'll see you next week.